And a little too much holding going on now. Carl's jab, not as fast as it was early in the fight, but then again, he was knocked down in early, and that kind of took a little steam out of it. In fact, uh, Williams jabbing and then putting his hand down. We've got an unintentional butt called here by Mills Lane. And that's important as far as the scoring of the fight, because if that butt ended it, they would cards. And now here's two shots by Morrison. Big uppercut by Tommy Morrison, and Williams is hurt. Morrison coming on, going for the kill now. Big hook by Williams, who Williams looked over at Mills Lane as he takes these bombs. Mills Lane very close, and Williams is groggy, looking over at Mills Lane like he wants it stopped. He doesn't want to continue, Dave. I think he's had enough. He knows he can't fight back. Morrison pouring it on, and Carl Williams has looked over at Mills Lane twice as if to be rescued, and now he will be. Not only was he looking at Mills Lane, he wasn't throwing any punches. I mean, that's the, that's the tip-off right there. If you're not going to fire back, then you get in there and you stop it before the man gets hurt. And a very excited crowd. You think he's a Tommy Morrison fan? Could be, or a relative. I don't know. <laughs> What a finish by Tommy Morrison. There's the headbutt-induced cut over Williams and Tommy Morrison. Explosive. That is his personality. It all came out in this fight. He saw the cut, and that just kind of spurred him on because when Mills Lane said unintentional headbutt, it's like Morrison didn't come on right away. Then he saw the blood and started opening up, and Williams never fired back. And as you said, he kept looking at Mills Lane like, please help me. And it took uh, a couple of glances and a burst of inactivity by Williams to do that. And what a good fight this was. E evenly matched, both guys had the power, both guys had little weak chins, so it made it real interesting that they could both bang on each other. There were moments of danger for both. Tommy Morrison had his in round five. Carl Williams had danger in the f danger in the third, and uh, permanent danger in round eight as this comes to a close and you'll be able to get a look at how Tommy Morrison was able to put this one into the books. See, Tommy Morrison just decided to open up. Was right in front of Carlos, but that left right on the jaw, followed up by the right. That started slowing Carl Williams down. He almost gave a little glance to Mills Lane right there, but I think the cut was starting to bother him a little bit, but those punches were doing some, some hellacious damage. Williams backing up, looking at Mills Lane again, as if to say, bail me out of this, and he's sagging along the ropes here, and Mills Lane finally comes in and makes the call on this fight. He separates the fighters. Another look at it. Well, Williams, when he got hit, he's the veteran. He's been in with some big names like Holmes and, and, and Tyson. Never grabbed him, never tried to hold on. He took punches in the center of the ring, but that one left right there by Morrison sent him to the ropes, and that was it. It's a little wild here, but Carl Williams is not firing back, so Morrison was able to throw wide punches. Williams was not taking advantage of that. Double hooks by Morrison, the right hand by Morrison. You see him exploding here. That's where it started, the left hook and the right hand, and then that uppercut was nasty. And, and Williams asked for it because he keeps bringing his right hand down, and Morrison shoots the left over it, and Carl Williams just at this point doesn't want any more. At this point, Carl Williams is overpowered. He's exhausted. He's run out of options. He's looking at the lane to end this, and finally it comes. And as far as the time, the introductions of that, let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mills Lane steps in to stop the bout at 2 minutes 10 seconds of round number 8. The winner by TKO victory, Tommy the Duke Morrison. So Tommy Morrison, Tony wins it in typical fashion. This is always the type of fight people like to see in, in heavyweight boxing. Can a guy touch it if you can't? What happens when you get up? Tommy Morrison had it all his own way early when he was able to drop Carl Truth Williams in the first round, which is typical Morrison. You figure out his fight's going over in, a, in about a minute. And Carl Williams got up from that and then had to face even more in round three. There's a good look at the first knockdown of the fight and Williams heading down. He did bounce right back up. And then as Williams was digging, that's why he got himself caught there, the Morrison left hand. They exchanged left hands in that round, both a little step back, but it was, a, I guess, a tease of what's to come, the power of Tommy Morrison, but Carl the Truth still has power on his own. 
a fight that really is Tommy Morrison's career in miniature. He's got the explosive power, and he's vulnerable at the same time. Tommy Morrison is not going to win any Defensive Fighter of the Year awards. It's always the type of guy that comes forward. Sometimes he leads with his chin, but he has that left hook that can take out most of the division on any night. Major thing here, though, is that these are the type of fights the fans like. Tommy Morrison may not because there he goes down again from, from Carl of Truth Williams. Took a long time that, that when he took the nine count. That's, that, that's getting a little dangerous. Second time, he kind of popped up right away. And now here is Tommy Morrison having weathered the storm, putting it away. He just closed the show with his left hook especially. Carl of Truth kept his hand down. From that shot, the fight was over because he kept looking to Mills Lane, didn't want any more Tommy Morrison. So Tommy Morrison, the big damage was with his left hand, not his right. He puts it away on Carl the Truth Williams, an excellent fight. For Tony Page, this is Dave Bontempo saying so long. But anyway.